Thank you. And I'm uh, particularly delighted to be here because I live in Farnham, so I was able to cycle, and uh, which is such a great advantage to me because I'm one of those people, um, public health trained, should be doing physical activity all the time, but I really struggle to get my 150 minutes in of physical activity like a lot of people do. So this was a really good example. And when our chief executive, Duncan Selby, w was asked, you know, can you feel somebody for this? I was straight there. It's just down the road from me. So um, I want to talk about um, the two main challenges two main public health challenges we have that are related to transport, and that is air quality and also physical inactivity. But also, as some of the other speakers have mentioned, um, transport can have a huge impact on our health in terms of social connectedness, in terms of reducing loneliness, in terms of open ac access to open spaces and green spaces, in terms of how we develop transport for an ageing population. How do we ensure that people with disabilities can access the transport? Um, how can we ensure that um, uh, uh, the transport is more dementia friendly? So there's a whole range of different things, but I wanted to focus on the two biggest ones that affect most of our populations. So air pollution, uh, as Claire, um, I think, mentioned, uh, it accounts for between 26 and 38,000 deaths a year related to man-made air pollution. And it doesn't just affect one group of people. I've described in this infographic how it affects pregnancy in terms of low birth weight, how it affects children in terms of asthma and slower lung development, adults, asthma, coronary heart disease, stroke, lung cancer, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease and diabetes, all of those related, and also uh, our elderly population in terms of asthma, lung function, lung cancer, all those are directly related to air pollution. But air pollution, like most other public health challenges, doesn't affect everybody equally. We know that air pollution affects everyone, but there are inequalities in exposure with the greatest impact on those most vulnerable. And I've put some of those in terms of older people, children, pregnant women, but also those with existing conditions, those with cardiovascular disease and also respiratory disease. But equally important is those communities with poorer air quality, e.g. those with situated closer to main roads. And we know those communities, often in disadvantaged areas, are also the people that are more likely to smoke, they're more likely to be overweight, they're less likely to have access to um, um, uh, uh, health care and um, uh, good um, food and nutrition. So there's, it's, it's uh, very similar to most other public health challenges. I then want to move on to physical inactivity. So how active are we? So one in four women and one in five men in England are classified as physically inactive. That's doing less than 30 minutes of moderate physical activity per week. There's also a focus on strengthening um, activities, particularly as we get older, and it can help reduce falls. Uh, and I'm not quite sure whether I believe this, but men are more likely than women on average six or more hours of total sedentary sitting time. Uh, and though that can't be true. <laughs> and what we've done, uh, we've been very effective at building physical activity out of our lives. So we do less manual roles, we drive everywhere, when we go home, we sit on the sofa. We don't even have to um, touch the remote control. We can ask the TV to change the channel. We can sit there and ask Alexa to deliver a pizza to us. We have done our best to remove physical activity out of our lives. We are the first generation that needs to start building physical activity back into our lives because otherwise our health service won't cope, our economy will suffer, we really need to, and uh, the transport strategy is such a good way of building physical activity back into our lives. Uh, rather than focusing on the negative aspects of physical inactivity, it's really important to focus on what the health benefits are of physical activity, particularly as we get older. When I see people, I say, um, if, you're, if you're physically active, fantastic, but if you get to the age of 50, 60, you really need to start becoming physically active because those are when it will make the most difference. You can see, um, by being physically active, reduced death by 30%, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, colon cancer, breast cancer, depression. More importantly, hip fractures reduced by 68%. 
If we had a pill that could reduce hip fractures by 68%, the pharmaceutical co companies would be absolutely rich. But we do have such an effective intervention. It's physical activity. It's walking. It's cycling. It's moving. So last, I just wanted to focus on how we can use this strategy. The strategy is good, but it could perhaps go further, particularly around cycling and walking, about, and how we address air pollution. So by addressing air pollution, by providing good quality infrastructure and public transport, we can encourage people to walk and cycle rather than drive and help people become fitter and healthier, and it will help the, the economy. Um, my, my, my sort of um, end point is, uh, and I mentioned this before, is about how we can rebuild, how can we build in physical activity into our transport and into our networks. Thank you.